I want to jump to this story. It's an old story. But last night, we were discussing a video that came out from the Atlanta airport that showed what appears to be a drill sergeant guarding a room full of illegal immigrants while an NGO was inside that brags, boasts, they're facilitating these uh, uh, migrant uh, traveling around the country. The speculation at the end of the show was someone said, this is where uh, people go for basic training. And so we do have some updates. Nothing I can say definitively. But if you were to lay out all the pieces in this story, it would look like there are a bunch of criminal aliens being brought into the airport in secret under guard of a drill sergeant potentially to be recruited into the military. I'm not saying that is true. It does also, it's, it's all, it's entirely possible that guy just happened to have been sitting there. That's right. A drill sergeant in the airport, sitting in a chair in front of this room full of illegal immigrants, just because he was there and he was waiting for a plane or something. Somebody reached out to us and they said that uh, uh, they may have information and they think uh, based on what they know, I don't want to get too much into it for, for uh, privacy reasons. The individual may have literally just been standing there uh, completely unrelated. It may be that the room in question was a USO room that was allowing criminal aliens to use his facilities. And either way, this drill sergeant, according to the state senator who had his camera taken from him, was guarding illegal immigrants. It does not mean he was ordered to do so. It could just be he as an individual was sitting in front of this room, preventing people from interfering in an operation that was smuggling humans. Now, many people pointed out to me that, in fact, the U.S. has been making attempts to enlist non-citizens for some time. We have this from Stars and Stripes. Senate bill renews efforts to enlist non-citizens in the military. OK, there's been a lot of talk about World War Three. We got this one from uh, Newsweek. You love Dan Crenshaw. I believe it's Dan Crenshaw who said this. Talk of World War III should not deter strikes inside Iran. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, I guess, but there absolutely is a fear that we are inching towards World War III. Germany, Sweden, the UK, Australia have all started conversations around reinstating the military draft. In fact, Sweden has always had one, but they're telling their citizens to get prepared for war. And now young Swedes are starting to consider whether or not they will be conscripted. In the UK, a high ranking uh, military officer said it's time to train a citizen army, which is conscript conscription for National Guard, I guess you can call it. And in Australia, they were having conversations about a push to create a civilian army to defend the country in, an, in if war were to break out. In the United States, of course, we are facing massive shortfalls in recruitment. And then you get this video that looks like it may be criminal aliens going through some kind of recruitment process. I say looks like. I'm not saying it is. Take a look at this from the New York Times. This is a story from January 5th, 2024. To bolster Russia's army, Putin eases citizenship path for foreign fighters. He's seeking to strengthen his military to fight in Ukraine while mobilizing a potentially unpopular mobilization of Russians. If Russia is doing it, other countries have used mercenaries throughout history. I believe the likelihood that the U.S. plans to or is actually in the process of using this mass influx of criminal aliens, using them for war, it's extremely likely. Now, a lot of people said, duh, we've all said this. Yes, we've talked about that very prospect on this show six, seven months ago. But now it's starting to seem more like a reality. And I think we need members of Congress, probably not going to be Democrats, have to be some Republicans demanding answers and questions as to what we saw in this video and finding out whether or not there are plans to use non-citizens coming through the border illegally, these fighting age males, to enlist them in the military and have them fight in the event there's a major a major war. I'm going to say this. If you were in charge of a country and you could not get people to join up and you feared World War Three was coming, I think most people would be like, we'll take mercenaries. We'll take anybody we can. And I think this is one way they're looking to do it. It, it just seems like the logical path. And I don't think some people have said, Tim, that would mean these people care about the United States. No, it doesn't. It means they care about their home in Wilmington, Delaware. It means they're like, hey, I got a million dollar property in Santa Monica. And the only way that stands is if we don't lose a war, they will do whatever it takes. Do you think the U.S. would just say, well, we're looking at a prospect of international conflict. We have a shortfall in our troops. Let's do nothing. Or do you think they're going to say, bring them all in, baby? See hey, you all. So you're saying there's not enough trans people joining the military that they have to they have to do this because I was these were criminal that diversity was the most yeah I, I thought we were told that diversity was the the most important actually, thing in recruitment right now no I I think to be serious actually they probably they did increase the amount of trans people who did join the military but it wasn't enough well it's not enough to bolster their ranks but the truth is when they offered uh, the, the 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 surgeries and things like that 
there was a big push mm -hmm. from trans people being like, I'll sign up. Free, free, you know, gender affirming oh. care, sex change operations. Yeah. But uh, outside of that, yes, the wokeness in the military has <laughs> utterly destroyed it. And so I have to wonder then, is it on purpose? Right. Because I knew, I knew, uh, I, I met a guy who was an officer, like an actual commissioned officer who said, I was going to be in the, uh, it, was a, it was a career for me and I'm, I'm out, I'm resigning my commission because of all the woke stuff, all the anti-white stuff, I can't be here. Now, what's, the, what's, what's their alternative? Either they're the stupidest people in the world or they're intentionally purging the ranks and then, oh no, we have no choice but to, to replace the, the soldiers we lost with non-citizens. And a lot of people think the purpose of these non-citizens to bring them in is to dramatically alter the electorate. These things are not mutually exclusive. You can bring in all these people, say, you're going to go fight World War III, and when you come home, you'll be a citizen. And then you dramatically alter the voting body. Hmm. But how do you fight for a country that you know nothing about and that you really have no allegiance to whatsoever? How did the Hessians? Uh, how, did, I, I, how did any mercenary group, how many, how many, how many military contractors in the Middle East? The other night, care? Serge brought up, I think it was Serge, that you know during the Civil War, a lot of Irish were coming over. Yeah, and right, up, handed, right, up, right off the boat. The musket said, go to war. I think part of the issue is, you know, yes, they could literally pick up guns and fight and maybe like hear commands or whatever else. But what happens afterwards? Like theoretically, if you're right. a citizen and you're a soldier, you get access to the GI Bill. When you come back to the U.S., are you coming back with the idea that I have served my country? Or are you saying like, cool, now I get some other benefits? If you never really acclimate to being someone who feels a like it's very different than people who enlisted mm -hmm. thinking this is something I'm doing in service of our country, which exactly. I just don't think our generation has really had. I think yeah. it's something that was in the past. And I think saying, you know, there might be someone who says, oh, well, I really feel as though I serve the country and now I'm a citizen and, you know, feel that effect. But I think for the most part, if it's transactional, if you're saying, oh, well, I'm doing this so I can get in and actually I'm going to not really acclimate in any way. I'm not going to take on our a, a culture because right now it's very hard to describe if we have, I mean, I really don't think that there is a unifying American culture that even people who migrate here with the best of intentions can seriously click into. And that's just very different than other points in history, including the Civil War, mm -hmm. when there was sort of something there right. that people were buying into. I, I, I got to tell you, if you're a conspiracy theorist who believes that there's a bunch of global elite want to take over the world or whatever, the best thing for them would be World War III. It reduces population and it creates enough damage and devastation that it gives you an opportunity to in enforce an international governing body. We've seen, this, we've seen this every time. I mean, if you look at the Civil War, powers went, went from the states instantly to the federal government after the war was over. If you look at World War II, you get the creation of the liberal economic order. If there is a World War III that causes massive population reduction, I mean, a lot of these population, the Malthusians are going to be very happy. But then you have cities in disarray. You have, uh, I mean, actually, look at this way. The NHS, the reason why Europe has nationalized health care for the most part is because of World War II. After everything was de decimated and destroyed, their economies were ruined. They had no choice but to be like all these people injured and damaged from the war need treatment. And so that's the evolution of it. The U.S. doesn't have that. Imagine what the world would turn into if there was a ma major World War III. And then from the ashes, the powers that remain say, if this happens one more time, there will be no earth. So we're creating the global order structure or whatever you want to call it. And all countries will abide by its rules. It will be based out of they'll create some kind of military force like the Capitol and Hunger Games. I'm not saying literally. I'm saying an opportunity for dramatic change comes from war. The reason the left would be happy to get a civil war is because the Constitution is gone. The reason why the World Economic Forum Davos elites would love World War Three is that it allows them to completely overwrite government bill, like basically get rid of all the different constitutions and guarantees of all the different countries. Well, but I was just gonna say, in my conspiracy brain, I, I've been like thinking about what this a World War Three would even look like, and I keep thinking like a World War Three is mostly drones and less people, right? And so the conspiracy thing for me kicks in where I'm like, these people should they become soldiers are going to be used against our own citizens what would the drones attack what would the uh, who knows targets like that have weapons you know uh missiles underground uh leaders sure. of some sort but if the weapons are all mostly drones the drones will be used to take out infrastructure right but they'll be like operating from like a, a yeah, ship yeah. out at sea you know and then what happens when you know you're in you're in new york and all of a sudden way up in the sky you can barely see it a tiny speck mm -hmm. fires a missile and blows up the williamsburg bridge yeah but I, I, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, if you wanted to create a military that really 
had no particular allegiance to the American people or its own citizens that at any point you could turn on the American people or weaponize against the American people, wouldn't you do it with people who came to this country with no particular allegiance to to the culture, to the country, to the people that to aren't each around, mm-hmm. to each other, mm-hmm. and enlist them in the military and you know i'm not just operates federally it's not even like they have a home state that they're like i would like to go back there and be a part of this community right exactly i I mean these people would have no reason to say that no i'm not you know we're talking about my parents my grandparents my family the uh, country that i care about they're just like okay big lessons from the civil war when the when the generals had to ask themselves am i going to fight for my country or my home and many of them said, my home is Virginia or my home is, you know, uh, South Carolina. And they le- and they left. These people come in. They their their home is I don't care. I mean, I don't know. It's one place. Right. So imagine what happens if we get a World War Three. I guarantee you, if these strikes that they're proposing on Iranian targets, not Iran directly, but Dan Crenshaw cer- cer- certainly wants it, but actual Iranian assets in the region. And this escalates one step at a time until we are literally in World War III. Before we, there's not going to be a formal declaration of World War III. Joe Biden is not going to be like, we're hereby announce World War III and let's go, baby. Right. It's going to be one step at a time. We will find ourselves in it. Facing a military shortfall, which everyone already knows about, Biden gives a State of the Union address saying, therefore, I'm signing an executive order under my powers in the state of emergency to enlist non-citizens in this country to bolster our numbers. It's basically... Star Wars Clone Wars. You guys have seen that one, right? No. I haven't. Yeah, you haven't? No. Oh, you know, guys don't get, you don't know this? Oh, man. Well, let me tell you. (laughs) Basically, the separatists want to leave the Republic and they're blockading a planet. The Republic does not have a military force that can stop them. Obi-Wan finds a planet that's mass produced clones and they're like, it's your army. There's an entire army of clones available at your disposal. And so they go back to the planet and they're like, What should we do? And they're like, if we use these clones, we can actually repel the separatists. So they say yes. And then the emperor says, now that I have all these clones who have no allegiance to anybody, we'll do whatever I say. He says, go kill all the Jedi. So this is quite literally like the real life version. The U.S. needing to bolster its numbers for a potential World War Three says we can use all these non-citizens. When that war is over and these people come back, you will have stormtroopers who don't care about you, don't care about your state, don't even know the name of most of the cities in this country, and they will do whatever the federal government tells them to do. And the federal government's been telling them that most of the citizens here are, are evil extremists mm-hmm. yep. who, who vote for the, all White the wrong supremacists right. And they actually hate, hate, yeah, they hate you. They don't um, even want you here. Right. So if you were, you know, to turn against them, it mm-hmm. wouldn't matter. That's why we held the enemy. curtain open for you to sneak in. Yep. And here's a gun. It's and wild. come back with crazy PTSD from whatever war we sent you to. It's mm-hmm. not just the United States, though. Mm-hmm. If if the U.S., I mean, and, and I don't know what the probability of something like this happening, but let's say U.S. bombs Iran. Iran immediately de- de- declares full-scale mobilization. U.S. starts talking to its allies saying, guys, it's getting hot. We need to make moves. And then before you know it, within a couple months, no one declares it but missile strikes, air raids, troop mobilization in Pakistan. It's heating up World War III. Joe Biden invoke, you know, invokes a state of emergency, gives a State of the Union address saying we need more troops. The numbers are not enough. We will not lose. There are many. He's going to say like migrants. He's not going to say illegal immigrants. He's say many migrants in this country love this country and will fight for it. And we are going to offer them that opportunity. He then creates this massive military force. Once the international conflict subsides and there's mass destruction and death, you now have the opportunity for a global elitist or whatever to say we can never allow this to happen again. Therefore, we will be creating a, a global governing body to uh, adjudicate disputes between factions with an international military force called the Global Task Force or whatever. And it will be these people who come from countries where they don't quite care enough. They leave. They will have no problem going to Europe, to Russia, to China. And so there will be non-national military forces. That's a potential. I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying the dominoes are lined up as such. It could land that way. It's not good. I don't like it. No, I'm so glad I have insurrection on my record. So I like I'm never going to be forced to enlist. Like though, it can't happen. I used to be able to well, play the gay old. card, but that's no good anymore. <laughs> not the insurrection card. But but how old are you? Forty seven. You're too old. Come on. 
I, I, I'm too old. I, I committed insurrection, and it, well, I'm gay. Did but you, did you that, that think funny. that it would be that you, you insurrection to, would get you out of the army and, and not the gay? It's, it's, like, yeah, I, I never dreamed we did up here. But it, but it is funny that you used to be too gay. Yeah. And they were like, actually, we changed our mind. Like, yeah. that's fine. Now that's I'm too not the insurrection. You're way low on intersectionality scale now. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. You're, a, you're, you're a white male. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and uh, gay is still cis heteronormative, I yeah. believe, right? Oh, no, is it not? It's problematic. It's problematic. It is. I don't know, man. World War Three or no? What do you guys? Think? I keep thinking. Well, I, I kind of feel like we've been in it and just not defining it as such for a long time. But I, I was just gonna say, I keep as thinking, our way with all international conflict. Yes, right. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at eight p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows, exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.